So I posted a little while ago of how I was getting these fish totes to turn into hay feeders. I have not yet turned them into hay feeders. So if you saw that, don't get excited. We've been busy with the move, but I just got two more. So I'm going to make, make all three of these into hay feeders. And then at least if I screw one up, I have extra. So these are the two that I just got. This one's in the best shape out of the two of them. This one has some cracking, but it's still perfectly usable. So I just need to put something here to kind of help hold that together and then put the latches on and then make like a lid with slow feed net. And then this is the one that I had before. This one's in the best shape out of all of them, but it has less insulation. So both of these ones, like if you put water in them over the winter, since they're insulated, they'd at least get like less cold and be less likely to freeze, which is kind of cool. So you could use them as feeders or waters. Anyways, this vlog can be a little bit of an update on my horses. Um, Gala, who is over at my overflow field she's a little yearling that was unhandled and yeah she's still not halter broke but she's really liking her scratches now and i can scratch her basically all over her body um so now it'll just be getting her used to a halter um which will be a little bit more difficult i think because she she's been shoot loaded so many times in a trailer that she definitely knows like what it's like to be lured and trapped so she's definitely more suspicious but once she's halter broke then i have more flexibility to move her around um, I'm just gonna go drive up to where my boys are um, at this place, my house. That's the house in the background. So the road down to the field is kind of long. So sometimes I walk it, a lot of the times I drive it. The reason being because I'm lazy and I'm often tired because I do a lot of working throughout my work day when I'm riding and working with horses. And I mean, having them farther away from the house is less nice in terms of checking on them. But there's other horses on the property that are checked on frequently by the people who work with them. And they also check on my guys, which is great. Uh, one of the ladies is in love with Pogo and asked if she could go in and pet him. And we're like, yeah, of course. So yeah, like for my anxiety, like I really liked the old place being able to see them from my window. But at the same time, it kind of added to the anxiety because if I heard any noise outside, even if it was entirely unrelated to my horses, I would start worrying that someone had had something terrible happen to them. And then I would either have to stay awake in bed, laying there worrying or get up and go check. I am going to put a security camera out here so that I can watch them, like mostly just for fun, but it's also just kind of nice for peace of mind. Um, so that'll happen. We're also gonna go get some round bales later today to bring over to the Grandview guys because they have less grass. I call them Grandview guys because that's the location that they're in. I know that's confusing for people that are not locals. So yeah, they have less grass. They've eaten down basically all the grass that has been there. They've also been there longer and it's a smaller place with more horses. Um, but since there's no grass, they need more hay bales. So I'm gonna try to make a few hay stations for them and get like two round bales, maybe a third one tomorrow. Um, and yeah, then have, they'll have lots of places to go to eat. And then once I finish hot wiring this field, then everyone else can come here or like some of them. And then the other thing that I need to do before I can bring more horses out is get this shelter built, which is what all this wood is for. So once that's up, that'll be easier and then they'll have enough shelter and they can come in. Call me the Hulk because I just unloaded that guy and the two fish totes all by myself and they spooked at it. Okay, so I've started hot wiring around the field. None of it's charged yet. And then I'm gonna put the cattle panels in front of the areas by the gates where they're most likely to kind of stand and wait for people. And then I decided on a whim that I might try to build a track system to preserve more of the grass. So I ordered like a bunch of these little portable stakes. Um, I ordered like 50, I think, cause I found a place that had them really cheap for bulk wholesale. So once those get here, um, I'm gonna finish wiring around like the rest of the field um, where the barbed wire is and then also do a track. So that'll be fun. Yeah, and pistachio has been the project I've literally been the laziest with since getting. I haven't done enough with him. Like he's tame, he's halter broke, he can saddle. He's been sat on and ridden around a lot. But, but I mean, but he's not broke. So I need to get going on that over the winter um, and the fall. So once everything gets settled in here, that's my plan is to get him going so that I can at least lease him out or start getting like other people to ride him for me. Um, but I want him to be fairly decently started before I do that. So I have one of the cattle panels affixed temporarily there. And then we're going to get started on the rest of the field. Once I have a few more of my things, because I need like a post pounder to get some of my little wooden posts in until my um, portable fencing gets here. All of the track system is going to be done in portable fencing because then we can move it easily. 
but I'm hot wiring around the barbed wire so that they can't get to it. And then this cross fencing is what I'm most concerned about in terms of like the wire posing a risk to them. So I'm gonna add a higher top wire on the very top of the posts so that it'll take the fence up to like six feet tall and then no one will want to jump it. And then there's gonna be another middle wire of electric wire. And then I'm gonna charge it all so that they'll zip zap paddy whack themselves and not mess with stuff after that because a little zap is preferable to a wire injury. So I want them to be afraid of the wire. Um, I know that we do fear-free horse training or try to make it as least stressful as possible, but they should be afraid of fencing that can hurt them. Uh, so that's what the electricity is for. It's also a much more fair way in terms of using like a punisher because yeah, it is punishing when they touch the wire, but the difference is the context never changes. The fence is always gonna zap them if they touch it. It doesn't follow them anywhere. It doesn't chase them. It doesn't change its demands like people do. So it's different. And in a perfect world, if I was a billionaire, I would just do like wood fencing or I saw this cool like tire kind of rubber fencing that was cool. This is Pogue. Pogert. For those of you who don't know, he's George's half sibling. So he's the little piece of George that has stayed with us, but he's smaller than George. And by smaller, I mean, he's still quite large. He's just not as large. Like, I mean, he's not that far off now, actually. But yeah, he's been chilling. He hasn't really done anything all summer. So that's why he looks like a noodle with no muscle. Um, so he'll start doing stuff soon too. Hopefully once time allows, we'll get him going again too. But until then he's chilling. He's just five. So it's like, you know, he's got lots of years ahead of him. And honestly, that's the thing with all of my horses. Despite them being like these guys being older, Banksy is the one I get asked about riding the most. And honestly, I'll be completely forefront in saying that. And honestly, I'll be completely forthright in saying that it's irritating to me because it shouldn't really matter when I ride him. And I don't really like I don't have a predetermined date that I'm going to get on him when he when I feel he's ready to be ridden, he will be ridden. And when I have time to and I feel like it, he will be ridden. But he's literally just a three year old. So it's weird how invested people are in knowing the timeline on that. And I know it comes out of curiosity and like general excitement, which is great. However, I think we should limit and temper that excitement because that same excitement is behind a lot of people rushing horses and a lot of people being encouraged to rush horses online. And it's something that I felt privy to when I was younger because people would pressure me in a similar way with horses of the past. And I felt obligated to do stuff with them because I thought I would be falling behind otherwise. And that's not the case. These two are becoming great little friends though. Pogo is pulling on his mask. Thank you for destroying things, guys. Yeah, scratch. Okay, so we got their new hay. It's sun bleached, but like the inside's really nice. So that's great. New round, Vela. I have to go back to grab one more after this because they both couldn't fit in my truck. So then they'll have multiple hay stations. There they are. There he is. I've closed them off from the backfield just to let the grass grow a little bit. So they're just up in this front section because I'm a big fat meanie. Yeah. Hi. What's going on, sir? Hello. Now you'll notice when Harlow gets closer that she has an open wound on her shoulder. And yes, I am in fact aware of it. And yes, we have been in contact with the vet, but given the placement of it being on the point of her shoulder, stitching it would have just torn the healthy skin and made it worse and they would not have held. So she's healing the old fashioned way with aloe spray and lots of walking around to drain the fluid but she has a third boob right now and she's literally the best patient like i honestly don't understand why people don't like mares because like my geldings would have been the biggest weeny little b words um about get i'll include some photos of how it looked like before but yeah you can see how open it is we're gonna respray it and clean it again because the aloe spray actually keeps the flies out of it pretty well it is weeping and draining but that's actually good because you can see like this is her third boob from where the drainage is um and yes it is very deep but again we couldn't suture it because it would just tear the stitches and the healthy skin making the wound itself actually bigger 
My best guess is that she either got caught by someone's toe if they kicked out at her or she ran into like, there was a down branch that had a point sticking out on it that we have taken down now, so. But yeah, horses are pretty stoic and honestly, they can heal a lot of injuries out in the field without like, stitches um more than you'd think but with one like this like i just wouldn't usually i would stitch it just for cosmetic purposes anyways and also just keeping the wound cleaner but it's just there's no point um so she's on antibiotics and she's on butte and it's getting cleaned and yeah so she, all looks good no signs of infection the wound was super fresh and clean when we found it which was really lucky so it didn't have a chance to get gross yeah and this one is super tame now. And she's realized that scratches are nice. Soon I'll be able to get the burrs out of her forelock, but the world apparently revolves around Milo, not her. Hi, good girl. Small little creature. See, we like scratches. Yes, there's the nose. Oh yes, we like scratches. Yeah, so basically she likes people. She likes me. I can touch her and she's not like afraid of me anymore. Milo's trying to nip my leg because I'm ignoring him. Um, but yeah, halter training is the next thing. Milo, you're the worst sometimes. The world does not revolve around you. So yes, it does. The hay into the field is like dinner time at the zoo because they all want to leave. Especially Banksy. Banksy will literally walk out this gate. He tried to leave with me and Jesse a little while ago and was determined to leave with us. But anyways, back to what I was saying about mares. So mares are kind of like human women in my opinion and geldings are like human men because when geldings are hurt, it's like the man cold. But when mares are hurt, they just suck it up and they let you do what needs to be done to help them and they handle it with class um if they like you that is if they don't like you and you kind of screw with them then they're kind of like screw you and honestly i don't blame them but yeah I, I truly don't get the the horse industry hate for mares because they're literally the classiest horses everyone's happily eating bail round two and happy shiny guys they're all starting to grow their winter coats which coats which kind of sucks but summer is ending at least they'll have a nice place to stay for the winter. I was actually gonna bring grass seed to try to reseed their area, but I forgot to. Hello, sir. You have no forelock anymore, thanks to Bert. You're like, hello? Where's our food? We've been waiting a long time. I'd like to speak to the manager. Really just did his tail yesterday and there's more burrs. Fuck. Oh, has actually lost weight because he moves around a lot more here. And now that his feet are getting comfortable, they're finally growing in more at the angle that we want them to. Hey, don't be mean. Tyne used to be completely flat and it's still way too low, but the heel is finally starting to come up. You can see the line here where he had a change in nutrition. All of this new growth is much healthier and the heel is way better on that foot. This is his problem foot, so the heel is still low because the heel kind of collapsed a bit over the wet months with the atmospheric river, but it's still much better than it was. All of the new growth is much better. It's coming in on a better angle and it's much healthier. So once this is gone, we'll have all healthy new growth thanks to Mad Barn Supplement. Sore because of her gaping hole in her shoulder, obviously, but she's actually the barefoot queen. She is the easiest horse to transition barefoot that I've had. C does not count because he has never worn shoes in his life. So yeah, I'm talking about you, sir. We drink in tandem. Yum. Hi, stinky boy. He says, I'm holding the water in my mouth. Hmm. Swallow it. Swallow your water. Why are you doing that? Redheads are just discriminating against Harlow. There she is by herself. You guys are jerks. Gal is so little. 
Yeah, so now that I've actually been standing next to her and scratching her, she's probably only like 13 hands. She's a little gal. It's basically my life with my horses right now. They're not really in work because there's not an arena at this place. They're planning on building one at my other place at some time, so then I should have one. But otherwise, there's lots of hacking trails, so when they eventually come there, that'll be what we do. I'll start working with them once they're moved over, or like at least the ones that I'll be working with the most I'm going to move over. And then Milo's probably going to winter a lot of the time at this place, depending on how wet it gets in the field at my other place because um, that one's on a slant so all the water is going to drain into like the neighbor's yard so anyways I'm going to head home now and feed myself and then we'll come back again tomorrow and do it all over again after I do clients and then hopefully I get to ride my own horses soon happy guys with Mount Baker in the background here he just looked at them. Hi guys. This is the trail they made. See they're walking it now. <laughs> Hi guys. Pretty pretty night. Yeah, we didn't bring their supplements. Whoops. Lucky guys. Lucky, lucky boys. Yeah. Happy kids. They've actually grazed down quite a bit, but it's interesting to see how they pick their grazing. It's just interesting, weird patches. Oh my god, I thought that was a dead thing. It's a stick. That sounds so creepy. <laughs> 